Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. How's the audio today? Hopefully, hopefully we got it fixed. I picked up a little attenuator and the cool part about having this little guy is if I had an external monitor where I could display more of the like recording info, I could see my audio and I'd be able to, like, I could do the intro where I'd do the excited part. Hello, friends, and all that stuff. And then I could turn this up slightly, like I'm doing right now. So there should be a little bit more for the talky parts. So I got that today. That's exciting. I For some reason, when I bought it, I just went and bought the same Amazon Basics uh, cable that I bought for mm, the microphone interface, uh, which is fine except that it's eight feet and I need it to be more like a foot not eight foot so it's a little excessive there's just a pile of wire hanging off the back of my workbench and it's actually kind of dragging the vol box off of my bench but now that I have hopefully I did some tests so this shouldn't be it should work uh, I did some tests before recording Hopefully I can mount all this, I can buy an appropriately sized cable, and we will have our nice little recording set up that I can just plop down, plug in, and go. Theoretically. I, I just need to remember not to, uh, not to scream with this knob turned up. I could turn the knob up. Like right now I'm talking, and so hopefully if I turn this knob up, this is about halfway, it should boost my just normal talky voice. But if I get excited, that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid the crackling. I'm assuming it crackled right there, just because it has been. I got a couple other things. This is something I've never used, and I'm going to be using um, on my next project, and that is a rabbiting bit. Um, I've never used one, especially one that has uh, multi... This is a multi-bearing rabbiting bit. What that means is the bit... <coughs> This big, big boy. This big boy right here, hopefully you can see that, is a two-bladed cutter. And the bearing on top rides on your material. So say I want to cut a rabbit or a ledge in this board, this bit would bury until it hits that bearing and would, you know. So anyway, the whole point is to cut a little notch out of a board. And when I build the drawers for the shoe dresser, the chest of drawers thing, uh, I'm going to rabbit the drawer bottoms in. So the drawer bottoms will be pretty structural. They're gonna be half inch plywood. They'll be a structural part of the drawers. And so these come with a whole bunch of different bearings so that you can get different size rabbits. And I think, in fact, it comes with this gigantic bearing, which would turn this into a flush trim bit, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, yeah, so I could make a flush trim. So this would allow me to make a rabbit up to a half inch deep, which I'm going to be using half inch plywood and it's slightly thinner than a half inch, so that's fine. Half inch deep and I could make one eighth, one quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, or one half inch um, rabbits deep rabbits and it gives little with a 3 8 inch bearing and it gives you a little number but you can't that's not printed on these bearings so that, I don't know that that's exactly helpful I mean I guess it is but you could tell by size I guess you could stack them up like remember the little the little like multicolored did you guys have that the little like play thing where you stack the the rings on the little thing you know, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I got this. This is cool. This is, this will be interesting and fun and new. I just heard a very strange noise. Sorry. Um, oh, and so, and I also got a new speed square. I've been using a plastic, you can see the bright orange one back there. I've been using that for a long time and it's okay. I mean, it's a speed square. 
It was cheap. That's why I bought it. Let's be honest. Uh, but I got epoxy on it, so the so it's no longer square. So I just picked up like a generic Swanson. This is a pretty well known tool brand, just an aluminum square, and they're generally square enough for the work that I do. Uh, and I use a speed square a lot. I find that's a tool that gets regular, regular use in my shop uh, for all sorts of measuring, marking, and or as just a cutting square for using a circular saw. I'll often run my circular saw along it like a guide, and that works really, really well. So, yeah. Ah, uh, oh. So speaking of the mic and this thing and having a monitor, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I'm gonna do that for this show because I don't really have, one, I don't have a monitor that I could keep in place all the time. Uh, if I had, I'd like to find like a used TV, like a 32 inch TV or something like that, that I could put on this wall back here. So if I find one, I'm gonna do that. Uh, but I purchased for my overhead camera, which you can't see, it's right here. Well, the camera's not, the mount is. Um, I'm, I, did a door, I, I did a video for Disney Lorcana. I've recorded it. It will be uploaded um, maybe this weekend. I don't know. I, I'm so busy, I don't even know what, when I'm coming or going right now. It'll be uploaded sometime in the not too distant future. Um, but anyway, I've been doing, I did a video and the focus is off on every single one of my overhead shots. It's so freaking frustrating that I cannot get focus dialed in for that. Uh, and so what I did was I bought a battery pack for that camera. Uh, it, it's not, a, not a, it's a DC, like plug it in there's an outlet up here. Um, so that I can plug that camera into power because I'm going to run HDMI and I'm gonna run HDMI to a monitor that's sitting like right here so I can hold a card up and I can see when it's in focus and I can wait until it comes in focus before I start talking about whatever it is I'm trying to talk about. And then we can pause, we can reset, let the camera focus again and then move on with our lives. It's been so freaking frustrating. That's the only answer that I have. And, and I, I don't, it's not really a good answer, but it's the one that I have. <laughs> it's what I got, that's, that's all I got. So hopefully, soonish, uh, I, I've, I've seriously considered reshooting um, all of those shots in the Lorcana video, like all of the overhead shots, just to have them kind of look decent, uh, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to run with it. If you've watched my review videos lately, it's been kind of a running joke in those videos that I can't keep anything in focus and that I'm really bad at what I'm doing. And it's all true. Those are all truths. Those are my truths. Please don't take them from me. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna leave it alone and laugh at it because this this video is not a good video. Like it's really not. I, I intended to talk about uh, my personal experience playing uh, trading card games in the 90s and, and early aughts. Um, and I ended up just kind of babbling. It was just kind of a ramble. It doesn't, it's not a very good video at all. So I think, um, I think I'm just going to leave it alone and just live with the fact that it's not a good video and move on with my life. And we'll worry about like, I'll, when I have an actual game that I'm, I mean, I, listen, I'm excited about Lorcana. I'm not, I am excited about it. When I have a game that is... What am I trying to say? Here, so the reality is, I'm not a reviewer. I mean, I am, and I have been for years. You guys have seen my reviews for years on this channel. I'm not a reviewer that anybody's going to go look to to learn about Lorcana. There are, that game has got so much hype that my video has very little chance of attracting any attention, and so I don't need to care. <laughs> And I think that's been kind of the joy of doing the board game content is it's another extension of I don't need to care. I, I'm, I'm doing, hold on, I'm doing things my way and my way isn't perfect and it's not special and it's not pretty and it's not, you know, it's hacky and that's kind of the whole point, right? It's DIY. That's what I do. So I'm having fun with it. I'm going to keep doing it. And uh, hopefully I will get that video out next week sometime. I don't know. It, it all just comes down to when I find time to edit because that's a lot of time. Uh, and I have so many other things going on. I don't know what, what my time looks like right now. 
So, what do you got going on this weekend? We have softball. Lots and lots of softball. Hopefully, hopefully four games. You know, who knows? Uh, but we got a lot of softball going on. I think uh, Malia's going to go play in a community Lorcana event tomorrow. I'm not going to get to make that because of the softball. And um, hang out with the kid and work on the shoe dresser. Let me know what you got going on in the comments. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Monday. Monday. Today's word you should know to sound smart is sanguine. It is an adjective meaning accepting of circumstances with good cheer and a positive attitude. Many marketers were sanguine about the do not call introduction, saying that it helped better focus their telephone communications. Eleanor Trickett, a DM news editor. Sanguine, S-A-N-G-U-I-N-E. Is that how you say it? Uh, the pronunciation guide here wants me to say sanguine, which I've heard it pronounced that way, but I learned sanguine for some reason. Like, I feel like that's the way my English teacher taught us to say that word, and I've just stuck with me my whole life. So how do you say it?